Hello everyone, this is Sinan Ertemel. Welcome to my second lecture about assumptions on knowledge and rationality in game theory. We talk about rationality a little bit in the first video and the definition is the standard definition making optimal decision in the sense that maximizing preference, maximizing utility, subject to constraints such as budget and it can be in other constraints. So this is nothing but an optimization problem, maximizing a function subject to constraints. I can say that my mother doesn't know calculus, so he cannot maximize a function. Does it make my mother not rational? Not necessarily so. In economics, rationality is making consistent choices. So, our, we are revealing our preferences by making choices. And ra rationality is nothing but the choices being consistent. Let me illustrate this via a very simple example. Suppose I am offered tea or coffee and my action is order tea. So I am revealing my preference, which is I prefer tea over coffee. And next I am presented with another problem, which is adding a third option, say hot chocolate. What would you like to get among tea, coffee and hot chocolate? And rationality means that my ranking between tea and coffee should not change after hot chocolate is introduced. So. I might like hot chocolate better than tea and coffee, that is completely fine, but I should not change my preference between tea and coffee. So in this new problem, I am allowed to choose hot chocolate or tea. If I am choosing coffee, then my choices are not being consistent. That means that I am not a, ra I am not a rational decision maker. So let's talk about different types of knowledge, different type of information. So the standard knowledge would be, I know something. So I know, say, rules of the game, let me call it X. That's knowledge that we all know, know about. And the second level would be mutual knowledge. Everybody knows X. Say, everybody knows the rules of the game, the rules of the chess game. And sometimes, in some solution concepts, we need a higher level of knowledge, such as common knowledge. So common knowledge means the following. An information X, say rules of the game, is common knowledge if everybody knows it. And if everybody knows that everyone knows it, and if everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows it until infinity. So this assumption could be quite strong, right? So we have these layers of knowledge which we obtain by iteration. In order to judge how weak or strong this axiom is, I would like to introduce an example which is sort of a puzzle, some induction puzzle. So imagine a remote island in, in which there are N people with blue eyes and the rest of the people have brown eyes. But the thing is, nobody on, on the island knows her own eye color. And you are not allowed to talk to other residents of the island to find out what I eye color you have, or there is no mirror or any other reflective surface on the island. So, and there is one important rule on this particular island, which is, if you find out that you have blue eyes, you have to leave the island the next morning. In a way, like evil eye, blue eye, so you are not allowed to live on the island anymore. If you have blue eyes and if you understand that you have blue eyes you are voluntarily leaving the island next day so one day 
an outsider who is a trustworthy, everybody believes in what he says, arrives on the island and he makes a public announcement. He says the following, at least one of you has blue eyes. And we are going to understand what common knowledge would take us. How do we process that information? The information is at least one of you has blue eyes. So we are going to solve this puzzle by induction. So for that, let's start with only one person having blue eyes. Then what would happen? So say n is 1. If there is only one blue-eyed person and if he hears that announcement, which is at least one person has blue eyes, that particular person is looking to all the other people and he sees that everybody, has, everybody else has brown eyes. So he realizes that he must have blue eyes because the outsider is not a liar. He's a trustworthy person. So... If n is 1, if there's only one blue eyed person, that person is going to leave the island next morning. That was easy. So let's see what happens if there are two blue eyed people. Okay, suppose I have blue eyes, but I don't know it. So other than myself, I see one person having blue eyes and the rest have brown eyes. So I hear the announcement. At least one person has blue eyes. Okay, if the other person was the only blue-eyed person, he would leave the island next morning. If I see that he is not leaving the island next morning, then he cannot be the only blue-eyed person. Because everybody else has brown eyes, which I observe, that means that I should have blue eyes. So, myself and the other blue-eyed person should leave the island after two days. And if you follow with that argument, if there are n eyed people, they would leave the island at the end morning. Here I would like to highlight the importance of the common knowledge. Let's go back to n being equal to 2. There are two blue eyed people. And let's remember the announcement, which was at least one person has blue eyes. I see that at least one person has blue eyes and everybody can see that because there are two blue-eyed people. Even though the outsider said something that we all know, but it invoked the whole induction argument that led two blue-eyed people leaving the island after two days. So... That's what common knowledge is about. Even though that information was known by everyone at the beginning, but it was not common knowledge. I mean, that information was not processed by all individuals at the same time. So that initial spark was given by this public announcement. Before that, I mean, nobody really thought about the implications of, let's say, two blue-eyed people and so on. So it became common knowledge after that public announcement. So I would like to always, I would, you all always keep in mind that the solution concept and the corresponding axioms. If I am invoking just rationality, then maybe the concept is very reasonable. But rationality is not enough and in some cases, I invoke the common knowledge of rationality. This example illustrates the fact that sometimes it is very unlikely that people can be aware of this puzzle and find a solution. So in game theory, many things can be common knowledge. Players themselves, their strategies, payoffs, rules, and the axiom of rationality, we can also define it as common knowledge knowledge of rationality, which is everybody is rational, everybody knows that everyone is rational, everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone is rational, and so on until infinity. So that's the end of our second lecture. In the third lecture, I will illustrate probably the most important example of game theory, that is Prisoner's Dilemma, 
and I will talk about our first solution concept, which will be dominant strategy equilibrium. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.